Karen Gillan shaves her head. Isn't Nebula bald? Amy Pond on Doctor Who, Karen Gillan became instantly recognizable thanks to her ravishing head of red hair. In order to portray Nebula in Guardians of the Galaxy, Gillan not only draped herself in blue makeup, but also shaved her head bald. Before revealing her new look, Gillan decided to have a little fun during a panel at Comic-Con. The crowd was stunned when Gillan removed her utterly convincing wig, which was actually made from her own hair. Gillan was so ecstatic she threw the wig into the crowd, although she suddenly realized that might have been a mistake. Uh, I'm sorry, I just had an urge to go the bear with me. I don't know what that was. Put away every can of pencils. Number eight, Justice for Barb. I was wondering, um, what are we going to do? Is Barb going to be in season two? Despite only appearing in a handful of episodes, Barb became a breakout character in the first season of Stranger Things. Actress Shannon Purser even earned a Guest Acting Emmy nomination for her role. Many fans were disappointed with the character's untimely exit, hoping that she'd somehow return in season two. While Barb's fate on the show was not retconned, Purser did return to steal the show at Comic-Con. Catching everyone off guard, Purser appeared as an audience member, asking if Barb would be brought back. The cast confirmed she would not, but at least Purser was welcome to stay for the rest of the panel. We guess you could call that justice. I was wondering if Barb is going to be in season two. <laughs> yeah, I can answer that. No. <laughs> Number seven, Batman versus Superman announcement. Some of you will recognize it, and it's it's not we're not adapting this thing, but it is the thing that will help tell that story. Let's be honest, the build-up to Batman vs. Superman was a lot more fun than the actual movie. That being said, the hype train took us on quite a ride, and it all began at this mind-blowing panel. On the heels of Man of Steel, there was little doubt that we'd be seeing another Superman movie in the near future. Director Zack Snyder upped the ante at the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con, though, having actor Harry Lennox read a passage from The Dark Knight Returns, and unveiling the then-untitled film's logo. I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. After years of eagerly waiting, it became clear that DC's finest were finally going to duke it out on the big screen. Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. It's his mother's name. Number six, the Star Wars concert. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we did something insane right now? Who wants to go see a live Star Wars concert right now? As the first entry in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, The Force Awakens became arguably the most anticipated movie of the 21st century. The filmmakers thus went all out at Comic-Con 2015, uniting several key cast members and revealing a behind-the-scenes look at the film. Director J.J. Abrams and company took things one step further, however, inviting the audience to a live Star Wars concert that same night. In a truly unprecedented move, everyone in attendance then walked to another location where lightsabers were handed out. The musical extravaganza came complete with fireworks, a video message from composer John Williams, and a live orchestra playing various iconic Star Wars themes. Just plain awesome. Brian Cranston's cosplay. Mr. Brian Cranston! Blend right into the crowd while attending Comic Con in 2013. The actor roamed the halls wearing a Walter White mask, passing himself off as just another cosplayer. So you can imagine everyone's shock when Cranston took to the stage at the Breaking Bad panel and finally removed the hauntingly realistic mask. Cranston and co star Aaron Paul proceeded to make out with the mask, earning laughs and applause all at once. Very fitting. Who would have guessed that the most memorable Comic-Con costume that year would come from a celebrity dressed as himself? Number four, Andrew Garfield undercover as Spider-Man. I've always wanted to be at Comic-Con in Hall H as Spider-Man with all of you guys. It's always been a dream of mine. All right. Cranston isn't the only actor who's attended Comic-Con in a self-referential disguise. During a panel for The Amazing Spider-Man, an enthusiastic fan dressed
dressed as the web slinger grabbed a mic before the Q&A session even began, proclaiming his excitement to be at his first Comic-Con. The fan removed his mask to reveal that he was actually Andrew Garfield. Dropping his fake accent, the British-American actor went on to read a passionate speech about the profound impact Spider-Man has had on his life, as well as how honored he felt to be playing such a beloved character. It's moments like this that demonstrate the unlikely influence heroes on the printed page can have, giving readers everywhere hope. This is definitely the coolest moment of my life, and thank you for being here and sharing it with me. Number three, Stan Lee's photo with superheroes. Hey, wait a minute. Just wait one minute. Oh. Oh, hold on. I'm just pretty pissed. Superhero crossovers are nothing new. But how often do you get to see the X-Men and Fantastic Four taking a selfie together? At Comic-Con 2015, the casts of X-Men Apocalypse, Fantastic Four, and Deadpool were united on the stage. He even nabbed Channing Tatum, who had landed the title role in the upcoming Gambit movie. With Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, Jennifer Lawrence, and numerous others lining up, Stan the Man Lee himself suddenly showed up to take the picture. Fox's track record when it comes to Marvel movies may not be perfect, but they did give us an unforgettable Comic-Con moment for the ages. Also, the Academy should seriously create a category for best cameo. Now that's the way to end a panel. Number two, Tom Hiddleston appears as Loki. We're in post-production of a movie called Thor The Dark World right now, which is... Humanity. Look how far you've fallen. Between Thor and especially the Avengers, Tom Hiddleston cemented himself as a fan favorite in the MCU. Not too long before Thor The Dark World hit theaters, Loki quite literally stole the show at Comic-Con. With the lights suddenly going out, the God of Mischief's commanding voice emerged from the darkness and spread throughout Hall H. Everyone's excitement peaked when the lights came back on with Hiddleston in full costume. With fans chanting Loki's name, Hiddleston continued to stay in character as he recited a grand monologue. Upstaging the casts of Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers Age of Ultron is no easy feat, but everyone was kneeling to Loki at this panel. Say my name! Say my name! Number one, Avengers Assemble. that we began this list with Iron Man, and we'll be closing it out with the Avengers. After Nick Fury's initial meeting with Tony Stark, we knew an even bigger universe was unfolding. Things got real at the 2010 Comic-Con, as Samuel L. Jackson introduced Clark Gregg, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, and Robert Downey Jr. The names just kept coming, with Downey introducing us to Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner, the new Hulk, Mark Ruffalo,